I apologize, I have some things in red up there. I'm not a big computer guy, right, so if you can't see it, I'll just try to get through it. But uh, obviously, thanks to Mark and Rob for having me here. You know, we're right up the road in Philadelphia, about an hour and a half, so come down here. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for me and when I started out back in 1996 was, was we just drove around all the clinics. Uh, my opinion is if you could take one thing from here, it was worth the trip. Okay, so that's why I have my staff here. I'd like to introduce them real quick. Uh, Kevin Proboth, who played safety at uh, Temple, is a graduate assistant. Sean Gaffney spent time at Tennessee. He's my assistant. And Kevin Proboth right there, uh, he's been in, uh, interning for me and just doing some volunteer work. Um, so the biggest thing for me, obviously, is to have a great staff. And I'm, and I'm fortunate to have those guys. So let me see if I can figure out this community. Want to point out something? No, I should be able to go ahead. So I'm going to talk about the winter and what we did this past winter. Now, we just got there in January with Coach Wool. Okay, so a lot of these things that we had to do in the winter was a lot of teaching things, okay, just to get started. Um, and that's one of our big slogans. I'm sure everybody's heard that before. Championships are one of them no one is watching. <clears throat> a lot of these guys just think you can show up in August and September and everything's great. Okay, so we beat it into the first day in January, the first day we got in there that we're starting to win games right off the bat, okay? So for me, I want them to be disciplined, and every time they come in that room, we're already winning games, okay? And we can also be losing games if we're not disciplined and we're not doing things right. I just don't get it. All right, so one of the great things about Temple's setup is none of our players have any uh, classes until I think 12.30 or 1 o'clock, Monday through Friday. So that leaves us the whole morning, I think 6 to 12, 12 o'clock, to do whatever we want. And it works out great because the biggest thing for me, and you're going to be on some of the slides, is the supervision in the weight room. I'm, you know, there's some days where we have to bring the whole defense in, the whole offense in, you know, during spring ball. And, you know, we can handle that. Um, I tell our recruits, you know, we can bring 50 guys in this weight room. We have a brand new weight room, you know, it's, it's, right. it's awesome. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Um, we can make a lot of noise and we can turn the radios up. You know, if I'm an outsider and I walk in that weight room, I say, wow, those guys are working hard. They're getting a lot done. From my standpoint, I don't know what the hell's going on. Okay, so I like the safety and I want the supervision. That allows us to push the kids, you know, they all have those comfort zones. It allows us with the supervision, the smaller numbers, okay? So if I have five full-time guys and we got 20 guys in the room, that's a pretty good ratio to me to make sure that we're pushing the kids that are doing things right, especially the technique lifts, the Olympic lifts and things like that. Um, so what we like to do is we'll bring in at 7 a.m., I'll bring in the O-line, the tight ends, and the fullbacks. Um, this is a great setup. I always wanted to do this when we were at Penn State, but we couldn't do it, and at Princeton because of class schedules. Um, but I like to get my big guys in there. I want them in there at 7 a.m. I want those guys up. I want them moving around. I don't want any of those guys laying in bed at 10 o'clock in the morning. I want them up, I want their metabolism going, I want to beat their butts pretty good, and then send them off right away to breakfast. Again, get their metabolism going, get those blood sugars up, especially guys that are trying to get to lose weight. Then we'll bring in 8 o'clock, we we'll go on the hour, D-line linebackers, 9 o'clock DBs and specialists, 10 a.m. quarterbacks, wide receivers, and the running backs. I, I call them the Pampers group. Uh, Coach Will wanted them to work at work out at 10 so they can get together and throw the ball around. So it's kind of a warm up. So from like 9 to 10, they'll go out on the field, uh, just do some rounds and things like that, and then we'll come to the way from there. And then a big thing for me is, you know, with big groups, I don't want any of my injured guys getting lost in the shuffle. So if I have, you know, we got 12 racks, uh, six on each side, and we're usually down walking down the middle coaching the guys up. I don't want an injured guy back in the corner on a leg press if he has a knee injury or he's on something for an upper body injury by himself. So for me, the big thing is, especially coming off the season, you know, in the winter program, is making sure we take care of those injured guys. Okay, so we'll come in at 11 o'clock at their own time. Again, that allows them to get up, get breakfast, and get their treatments, and then they can come to the weight room. Okay, so our schedule. Monday, we do a speed warm-up, and then we do our upper body lift. Okay, so the speed warm-up for us, could, you know, just starting off in the winter, was just a lot of form. A lot of form running, things of that nature. Uh, I tell the guys, even if it's only 10 minutes, Okay, over the course of six, seven weeks of the winter program, that's going to add up. Okay, so some days, you know, if we come in and we're stressed for time, we might just warm them up quick, but we like to get them out, you know, as best we can, depending on the weather, do a quick speed warm up. Agility warm up, you know, uh, box drills, foot ladder, that kind of thing on the lower body day. 
in conditioning, we usually do 6 a.m. in the morning, you know, which is the norm. And then what I try to do, because we have so much time afterwards before any of those kids in class, is we bring them in the weight room and we usually run them through three groups. We'll do foam rollers, another group will be doing rack stretches, you know, we'll be doing things for a stretch the rectus out, a lot of things for the lateral hip area on the racks. And then you know, the other thing is you know, we just cut some ropes, we just do some rope stretches. Again, trying to work on a lot of those hip flexors. If any, any area is going to be tight, a lot of our guys are those hip flexors. Thursday, similar to uh, Monday and Friday, we do a lot of plyometrics. Um, you know, when we first started out, the biggest thing for us was teaching guys how to land. So before we jumped into all these, you know, the, the higher level progressive plyometrics, we did a lot of landing drills, so those box step-offs. Um, I think we started maybe even just our 12-inch box, just having them step off and stick the land, making sure the knees weren't buckling in, land and saw. Then we would progress up to the 18 inch and go from there. Um, so we would do that for the first few weeks. Again, I just want to teach them how to land. Okay, and that's actually a good eccentric uh, movement for the hamstrings uh, for knee injury prevention. And then uh, Saturdays, we were there for two hours on a Saturday morning from 9 to 11. Since they did upper body on Thursday, that allows them to come in on their own as long as everything's safe and they can get a third upper body with them if they want. And we usually let them do whatever they want as long as they're not being idiots okay, and put themselves at injury risk. Where they come in and do recovery, come in as some perfect guys are trying to lose weight and a little extra conditioning. And again, it's optional, so we can't make them come in, but we've averaged about uh, 40 to 50 guys with them right roughly on Saturday, which was really good. Okay, the guys got in. So we were happy with that. All right, our goals, okay, you know, a lot of this is the same across the board. Obviously, injury prevention, you know, the goal of ours is the biggest goal we have. Uh, mental toughness. Uh, again, we try to stress to our guys, we've only been around for four months now. I don't care how big and strong they are and how fast they are. If we're not mentally strong, you can throw all that out the window as far as I'm concerned. If we're not mentally tough and we're not willing to compete, everybody's going to get tired at some point in the game. Fourth quarter, you know, the fourth quarter programs everybody runs, all right? That's a big thing for us. Because again, if we can't do things right and be disciplined, not jumping off sides, be tough, be able to move people uh, in the fourth quarter, third quarter, whatever it is, I don't care what he's benching, what he's cleaning, what he's doing, I don't think that's going to matter. He's not going to be able to be tough enough to use. Muscle strength and power, power and massive conditioning, obviously, is a big thing. Now, during the winter, uh, we didn't get a chance to really do a whole lot of conditioning, starting off with back. Next winter, I'm going to make sure we do a little bit more. So I don't like us going into the spring without having some kind of base conditioning uh, level. Um, so our, I'll talk about it a little bit later. But a lot of our conditioning that we did on Wednesdays and on Friday mornings, um, there's a lot of mat drills. I'm sure everybody's seen those uh, mat drills, a lot of things with their coaches. Our station, you know, we had, uh, I think, five minutes of station. We would do some fine metrics, you know, like I said, and acceleration drills, short burst, 10, 15, 20-yard burst stuff. And we would rotate around that. Okay, so that's basically what we worked on today. Um, flexibility, you know, speed training, we're going to get into that, as like I said. Um, really, you know, during the winter, it's a big teach uh, time for us. You know, we're not going to jump into doing um, sled runs just to make it look good. If the guys don't have good form and they don't have to run right, what good is a sled run? Right? We're just reinforcing bad habits. So for us, teaching good agility technique, you know, the guys aren't reaching and pulling, they're staying low, well, working on pushing, all accelerations and pushing movement. Proper running form, you know, instead of this, and everybody thinks moving their arms real fast, which means they're running fast. So we really focus on the basics, to be quite honest with you, during the winter. So when we get into the spring, you know, we can kind of apply that and get through a little bit quicker during our warm ups uh, before spring practice. Obviously, this is a good thing that you know, a lot of our guys struggle with the flexibility uh, coming out of high school, especially our big guys, you know, and obviously we've seen some of our, even our DBs, they're so tight in their hips, and we all know, and I try to stress to them, when the NFL guys come in, the scouts come in and work our guys out from you know, when I was at Princeton, at Penn State, and uh, um, you know, this past year at Temple, some of the first things those guys are doing are just a basic body weight squat to look at their flexibility. So for this not to be an important aspect of the program, I think, and obviously you've got the injury prevention aspect of it also. Now the functional movement screen, you know, that's kind of like a big buzzword lately, you know, with great foot and everything. We definitely utilize that. Uh, we actually just got one. And uh, you know, part of our team that we're trying to formulate again, you know, this is this program is brand new with everything we're doing, is we're fortunate enough to have a physical therapist on our staff along with our two athletic trainers. And Joel does a great job. We actually, I had him uh, put together. We tried to get as much of it done, you know, with the time frame that we had. Where he's actually taking measurements on guys. He's measuring their angles, like hip flexor angle. You know, what is within the normal. And we really you know that we 
try to get our linemen to get, get that done first. You know, the FMS takes like 10 minutes a guy. That's the only downfall to it. So if you have 100 guys, it takes forever to get through. So we try to prioritize guys, all of our linemen, and then guys that we know are just stiff from watching them squat and those types of things. We'll have them do the FMS, and then Joel will take his measurements. And then we put together a program, a stretching program for them. We just call it the weak link program. So right now in the summer, uh, at the end of their lift, they have a sheet. And they're going to go through at least two or three times a week. They're going to go through that sheet to do the stretching or the mobility drills or whatever it is, right, to take care of the weaknesses that we found that they had through that functional movement screen. Obviously, hopefully, you know, it's going to make them better lifters, obviously, if they can go through better ranges of motion and work through full ranges of motion. But, you know, the injury uh, prevention aspect as well. Uh, nutrition and supplements. You know, supplements are always a big thing, you know. Some of the stuff, some of the guys that I've been around have used, like the, the, some kind of Russian mix that had the hammer and sickle on it, and all kinds of stuff. And it really scares me, you know, the whole fact that this is not a regulated industry. The guy, if, you know, if something's illegal, all they got to do is change the name, and it's still in the product. Okay, so uh, just talking with our guys, you know, after spring ball, a lot of guys would come in one on one and we would talk about supplements. You know, that's one area that really scares me with our guys, you know, the stuff that they're going to be taking. Because we can educate them as much as we want. We all know we've all been around it. They get on the internet or they know a buddy somewhere else uh, that may not be in school athletically, that might, might be a lifter, the stuff that he's taking. I just worry about the PEDs, to be completely honest with you. You know, from what we're testing. Or something that's in there that's going to make their heart race and put them at risk in a winning condition and things like that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a big concern for me. So, for me. Uh, the biggest thing we do for our guys is after their lift, we give them chocolate milk. We have muscle milk, the collegiate muscle milk powder, you know, which is trustworthy in terms of giving it to them. They can take that with them for later in the day. Uh, we have that step one multivitamin. We're going to, I'm working on getting step one vitamin D. I uh, you know vitamin D is one of those big uh, vitamins that everybody's really deficient in, especially up in, you know, in uh, Pennsylvania during the winter time. There's no sun, uh, so we make sure they get some of that. We always have bagels. You know, those guys can bring cream cheese in because you know we can't give it to them. You know, those NCAA holes, um, the peanut butter, and things like that. I'll, I'll tell you this: it was, it was a scary uh, moment, just you know, just to throw that out there. We had a guy that was so allergic to peanuts. Uh, I think he caught a ball out there in spring ball, and his eyes fall shut right there on practice. So if you're going to, if guys are going to have peanut butter, I would just say to make sure that you know you've tested guys to make sure nobody has a peanut allergy. Okay, you got to get the AccuPen or the EpiPen, whatever that thing's called. So that was that was an interesting situation. Again, another these you know these last seven and eight are so big. I try to tell the guys you know you're going to get stronger you know, when you leave that weight room and your rest and your recovery. A good eight hours of sleep to me is not two to ten. Okay, I try to tell them as best I can, you know, dealing with college kids, get in bed by midnight, you know, or 11 o'clock. Get your good rest, especially if you're working out at 6 or 7 in the morning, okay? And, you know, again, all we can really do is educate these guys on this stuff. These are the things that they want to be good. I just play like being honest and tell them, if you want to be good, you got to do the things I'm trying to tell them, okay? Get your rest, get your recovery, right? Do the things you need to do. Eating, you know, some of these guys come in and lift at 4 o'clock. When I was at Penn State, I'd say, how many times did you eat today? He says, once. Okay? So this is a big area for us, and we're really trying to step it up with some of the things we're doing to help those guys in that area, those areas. Uh, program for balls, like I thought. Supervision and safety for us, again. The supervision and safety, you know, we're going to get the intensity and the work ethic. Right? These are bigger letters. To me, this is everything. Okay? I don't care what we're doing. Um, you know, I've, I've been around a high-intensity program. I've been around the Olympic program, a uh, program that did a little more power lifting, which is great for me because I've seen it all. Bottom line is this right here. Okay, if they don't come in with intensity, whether we're doing two sets, three sets, four sets, I want intensity and I want them working hard on whatever we're doing. Okay, so work ethic, if we don't have that, it's just like the mental toughness thing. So if we don't have that, we have nothing, in my opinion. Okay, so that's, that's where it all starts for me. So even in the warm up, you know, like guys come in if we have a 7 o'clock lift. And they're real lackadaisical, and they're goofing around, and I don't want that. Okay, as soon as we start that warm-up to me, that's starting the actual training session. When we start the warm-up before practice, you know, those guys that like to fix their socks and all, I don't want them doing that. Do that before the warm-up. Because to me, the warm-up, the work ethic, the intensity is all starting right then and there. And I want them mentally focused on what's ahead. Okay, so the intensity and the work ethic, you know, I'll probably say that about a thousand more times, but, you know, it's a big thing. <coughs> With that structure, discipline, and accountability, okay? I heard Ken Manning talk a long time ago, and we, we saw a video, I showed my guys a video a long time ago. 
But he was talking about structure. Now, deep down, all kids want structure, and deep down, all kids need structure. So we'll give kids a structure. If we have a 7 o'clock lift, your butt better be there about 10 to 7. Okay? If anybody comes in a second late, they don't get the lift with the team. They have to come back and have one of their teammates train. And then they spend a little bit of time with us on Saturdays. Okay? Again, I want the discipline and then the accountability. Uh, don't come in to me you know, when you miss your lift and try to make the story up. We've all been there. I've slept in. I've been late for things. You know, just tell me the truth and be accountable. And also, the, the go along the lines with that is I want the team to be accountable for one another. You know, I just got an over long spiel. That's when my voice is cracked up. On Wednesday, our first conditioning run of the summer was absolutely pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. You know, I just want them to understand that, you know, they're going to be the ones out there on the field together. So the accountability of them, you know, they're, they're going to be used to me and Shell and Pro getting on them. You know, we've all been around that. The coaches yell at you. Before you know it, they're deaf ears. Accountability for us in the weight room and out on the conditioning field during practice is teammates getting on teammates. Okay? Because I think that means more than the coach always on the bench. All right? So the accountability aspect. And there's also accountability, you know, from our staff. I tell our staff, and they know it right up front, if we're one 110% effort from our players, their butts are going to get 110% effort from us. Okay? And that's a big thing for me. We get in there at 5.30 in the morning. I don't care if we slept two hours. You better be ready to go. Because when the kids get in there, all right, sometimes they're not up and ready to go. You've got to be a tempo setter yourself as a coach. So that's a big thing for us. When they walk in, you know, we can all geek up and get them ready to go. All right? So as far as the strength training during the winter, the big thing, you know, the recovery from the season. If we come off a bowl game, I think the winter is seven weeks long before spring break, which really is a long time. Now, you could get a lot done in seven weeks, but it really is a long time. So with different things here and there, they might have to come out to six weeks, you know, if we have a testing week or something like that. So again, recovery from the season, evaluate those injured players or anybody that had an issue uh, that may not have realized they had an issue until after the last game if we haven't seen them. So we need to cover all those things. So we need to get in there with the trainer and our physical therapist, right? And then, those, then we get together as a sports medicine staff and us, sit down, talk about the guys that are injured and make adjustments to their routines. Right, strength improvement, doing a whole lot of volume. Again, the conditioning level wasn't high this past winter, but you know, we want to prove that. So I'll just try to get through this uh, you know, fairly quickly you know, so we can get to some more things and demonstrate some things. So the upper body routine, and again, this, you know, this is kind of like more of a template. Uh, didn't mean we stayed on this the whole time. Like, we like, I like to switch things up. Uh, we'll stay the same for a lot of those things, but you know, when we go to back, uh, military press, we'll do a lot of different things. So. Uh, it started off, we, did, we always do neck, you know, I'll talk about the neck and how important that is first, every time we do something. Uh, the muscle plane, just trying to help them catch the bar, do those types of things, see the flexibility in the wrist, shoulders. Uh, shrugs, you know, we do a lot of things in between, mobility, retraction things, wall slides, foam rollers. The bench, I tested them when we first got here, 225 or 185, if some guys can't use 225. And I would go off that, you know, how they did with that, and I would set the percentages up uh, for, for the bench the rest of the year. So right here is basically our testing in a sense. Um, and then we'll talk about that a little bit later. Then we'll go to the back exercise. I like the person who do a, a push-pull uh, emphasis when we're lifting. Um, I really love bringing out the negative only chins. We do an eight-count negative on those. Those guys usually aren't too happy about that. But again, you know, it's a mental toughness type thing. The brick is shot, you know, they're utilizing the core a lot. Uh, it's really, honestly, a really good exercise to just work on that mental aspect. Uh, and so when you see these things underneath, uh, to the right, this is what we're going to do during the, uh, you know, during the rest time. And again, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit later. So dumbbell, military press, barbell, military press, or you know, seated press. Uh, we do some reviews like I like to do stand for the most part. Then we'll finish off with something from the back. Uh, then you see those injuries or modifications, you know. If, you know, the first time back, if someone couldn't do, let's say, a chin because there was an issue, all right, then we make sure that we record everything. If we had a change in exercise during this workout, we write it down here. That way, when I go to the trainers later on during the day, uh, we're on the same page. And, you know, especially if the kid did not go in to see the trainer, which usually becomes an issue. Uh, so the lower body routine one, you know, as you start off with a good warm-up, especially the hips and everything. We're working on our power movements now. Now, especially with the Olympic lifts, you know, the hand plane is the one we're, we're utilizing the most right now. Because I'm not going to push the issue with that in terms of a lot of weight right off the bat. For me, I want them to have that technique then. Uh, so the biggest thing for us is our kids, you know, trying to catch the bar and get their elbows up. A lot of them catch them like this, trying to hold too tight onto the bar. 
And then again, like I said, if I mentioned things, the land, the land that went way out of here. I said, just doing that quick lateral shuffle and putting your feet back down, putting force into the ground. So we usually just work on a lot of that. So I think we did that for maybe two or three weeks before we actually started doing the hand movement. So I want them to have that stuff down. I just don't want to jump into those types of things. Uh, uh, barbell back squat, you know, things we did in the middle. Uh, barbell RDLs, you know, calf raise. I always like to do a single leg choice at the end. So on this day, it's either a walking forward lunge, a uh, stationary reverse lunge, or box step up. Uh, we, we usually utilize the box step, up, step ups quite a bit, uh, just for the fact that we can stay in the wraps and thing, you know, for time uh, efficiency. But again, something for the hamstrings. So we're always making sure we do something for that posterior chain. Uh, to go along different things with the boot hands and those types of things. Uh, second upper body routine, we start off with the uh, barbell dumbbell weight line. Coach Rule is really big into the 225 max rep test. Like he wants all of our line to be upwards of 30. You know, we're trying our best, but we all know that goes. You know, not, every necessary, not everybody's necessarily going to get there. So if that's going to be a big thing for our coach, I'm going to make sure our guys have the best chance to do as well as they can. Because uh, some days I would, I would like on the second day to start with a shoulder exercise, a shoulder press. Uh, but so we started we started a barbell line on this day. Uh, again, jump pull-ups, pull-ups overhand, barbell push presses. Uh, and again, another back exercise at the bottom. Uh, lower body too, again, starting with the cleans, those types of things, the Olympic movement, the power movements. Uh, front squats, uh, we started rotating uh, uh, front squats and straight bar deadlifts, kind of like on one week we do front squats, the next week we do the deadlift. Uh, if we do that, then what we can start doing is making movement on, uh, we do our back squat, and we might move a few sets of front squat at the tail end of the back squat. So on that second day, we're just doing the deadlift. So we're still kind of getting all three of those in the week. I really like the dumbbell single leg RDL. You know, the guys are just holding the dumbbells, slight bend in the knees, same idea. You know, just going down, squeezing up. Obviously, you know, you're going to get the stability out of that, you know, a lot of core work. Uh, so I always like to do a lot of the single leg stuff. It's obviously good for the strength aspect, but we're not, you know, compromising by, you know, on a bilateral exercise, pushing more with one leg than the other. Uh, and again, you're going to get the stability aspect, kind of stabilize it. Single leg stuff. Uh, calf raise again, single leg choice on that day, split squat. Um, I really like doing those Bulgarian single leg squats. Yeah, because you know, I think they're tough and they're hard to do. So I let those guys do that. And we're, you know, a single leg, uh, we actually call it the pistol squat where we'll put the box behind them and they're going to squat down. Uh, we just start off doing body weight with those as a single leg. Uh, hamstring drops, you know, those old, like some people might term them those Russian Nordic or drops or whatever. So they spot each other by holding the ankles lower themselves down and push themselves back up. Uh, or triple threats, which is a great exercise. I'm not going to have uh, Kevin demonstrate that. Uh, but it's, it's three exercises in one for the hamstrings and posterior chain, which I love. And uh, so we work a lot on that. All right, so our schedule, I'd like to get two weeks of that in. And then the third week of the winter, we would switch things up where we went to uh, two total body days. OK, so it's kind of like. I brought in our, our, my high-intensity background at Penn State for these days, where we start off with, again, I don't want to go away from learning the, uh, the Olympic lifts, so we didn't throw that out the window that week. We still did that in the back squat. And on this day, again, we did six, uh, three sets of six back, then the sets of five on the front squat. And again, you know, usually you about 80% of your back from the front. The RDLs, but on this stuff, uh, so this is a rep range. So like on the dumbbell shrugs, we worked at 30. I tried to guesstimate a weight where they would fail between 10 to 15 reps. So if we worked a failure, they had to set it down, shake their hands out, pick it back up. So say they got 14 reps, that next rep up is 15, 16, and they got to keep pushing through until they get to 30. Again, you know, it's a mental toughness type thing to push through that. Uh, Superset, dumbbell bench, six to eight, as many as you can. So ideally, the weights on these sets should drop. So if I use 100, uh, say, pounds on the first set, I might be using 90 for the second set, 70 for the last set, and same thing on the row. So we went from training to failure on those days. And again, it's just kind of like to bring them in, change them up, and, and just beat them very good. So again, get to the metal aspect of you know, that whole thing. And then finish with the, you know, the single joint, uh, single aspect shoulder stuff, lat raise, front raise, external rotation, all those things. Uh, the other total body day, we start with the upper body. Just do a superset right off the bat, pull down. And then we go to, uh, we have uh, those pendulum leg presses. This would be a day where we take the bar off the back that week, or on this day, and just go old school, 7 to 10, and rep it out, push through it, uh, leg press. And uh, usually we would kind of superset that with a, a prowler push. So when we beat them on the leg press, have them get out, 
you know, right in the crowd, of course, for maybe 50 yards, 20 yards, whatever it is. Okay, again, getting to that point where I want the intensity high, I don't care how bad they're hurting, I want them pushing through it and being mentally tough at that point to look at. Um, barbell lockouts, we like to throw those in, or dumbbell floor press, like those types of things. Thick bar, uh, curl, again, utilizing the grip. You know, training the forearms is kind of the thing that's kind of gone away. You know, all those kids focus on is their buys and tries. And they don't train their grip or the forearm nearly as much as they should. So again, you think in terms of injury prevention, if this is really strong here, really weak here, all right, you might run into some uh, elbow issues. So we're always doing things for the grip. Always doing things for the grip in the forearms. Okay, so that's basically real quick what we do strength-wise during the winter. Now, <laughs> the winter conditioning, just, you know, I went into it real quick. A lot of teaching stuff going on. Okay. I want, again, similar to the weight room when I said we can do a whole bunch of things, make a lot of noise, a lot of people will walk in and say, boy, they're doing a lot of things. The same thing goes through to this kind of thing, where we could have 18 things set up out on the field and have the guys run around like mad, and the coaches might come out and look and say, wow, they're, they're really working. But what are we really doing? If we're not doing any of those right, okay, we're not, we're not getting any of them. Okay, so for us, again, the supervision and the teaching, Form running. I told the guys, they're going to be so sick of doing form running by the time they leave Temple, but I don't care. Okay? I want them working on the fundamentals and the basics all the time so they don't go out the window. I'm staying low. You know, I read a lot of our guys, you know, when you get them, they think this is being low. Instead of you know, getting that good athletic position, sinking their butt down, okay? being ready to move and push. And again, plyometrics, uh, acceleration drills, uh, mat drills is a big thing. Some days, uh, Coach Wool, we had three different matches set up, and they would just do that for an hour. Because if they didn't do it right, they got sent back around for anybody that hasn't ever seen those before. So Coach Wool loves that thing. Now, conditioning, again, when we did condition, we would do some half gasses real quick at the end. And again, that's one of those things that if they don't start, I like to be disciplined with some little things. So if this is the line, I want their feet behind the line. If there's 50 guys in our, in our, our big group or, or combo group, whatever it is, one guy doesn't have his foot behind the line, that's an extra rep. If a guy doesn't touch the line on the far end of the field, that's another extra rep. If a guy doesn't run through the line and finish, that's an extra rep. So again, trying to get the mental aspect down and doing the little things right. Because to be honest with you, going over and touch the line with your foot, if you can't do that, I mean, really, I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff that will drive you up a wall, little things like that. But I really like what we were doing here is we did a four minute team run. Uh, we got this from Texas a few years back. Now. So the whole team goes as one. And what we do with that is there's 60 yard sprints. Okay? So now our skill guys are up first. Shelton will be down there on the uh, opposite 40. We'll start him on the goal line. And I'm standing up here on the goal line. So I send the skill group down. Shelton watches the line. As soon as the last guy in that group crosses, Shelton blows the whistle. It brings our combo group down. As soon as the last guy in the combo group passes Shelton on the line, he blows the whistle and our bigs come down. Okay? Then, Last time, last guy comes through, he blows the whistle, it brings the skill guys back to me. Now they're on my whistle. Okay, so we go up and back, and we're going to do eight reps of that. And they have to get those eight reps in four minutes. Okay, if they don't do that, then the first day I think we ran it four times. And basically what we did, quite honestly, and it was awesome from my standpoint, I think the first time we did it with the whole team, the first time we ever did it, they finished in 429, I think. So Coach Wool sent him in and said, if you don't want to do this, Stay in the locker room. The guys that want to do it, come back up. So, you know, we had, which was kind of depressing, about half the team stayed in the locker room. They didn't want any part of it. Brought them back out, we ran it again. He told them the same thing. If you don't want to be here, go back in the locker room. And I only want the guys that really want it to come back out. And I think we did that three times. Uh, how many guys we have at the end? 20? 15? 15 guys that came back out. And this is after the whole winter uh, morning workout that ran it and finished it in 357. Those guys immediately became our black shirt guys. Because right? when we evaluate guys, if you get a black shirt, that means when we evaluated the film from the morning workout, you were top notch. Okay, then we have a cherry jersey from the next level down, so on and so forth. So right off the bat, those 20 guys that came back out and sucked it up, we know we can count on those guys. Okay, so we would do this once a week. It was actually uh, the last, last uh, run, uh, it was a Friday before spring break, we ran it. It was 404. So we didn't pass it. We didn't get the four minutes. It's usually that one guy in the lineman group that screws up everybody else. But at least we got better at it. So that's a, that's a really good uh, 
team building thing, if you want to call it, because it holds those guys that like to lay back and take their time. It holds them accountable. Because I'm not blowing the whistle until that last guy finishes through the line. Okay, so I think that that's a great conditioning tool. Again, hold guys accountable because if they want to, they want to do things half speed and not push themselves, then they're gonna, they're, you know, the whole team is going to pay for it. What, so what is the rest? In? The rest time is just as soon as that last guy in that big group comes and shovels blows the whistle, they're coming back. They get in four minutes. Is it like a 25 second rest, something like that? Uh, in terms of the, 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 the between sprints, yeah, yeah, they're probably come out about that. Yeah, roughly. Each group everybody does eight. Yep. So our skills go, our combos go, our bigs go, that's one. Then they come back down to me, and they don't line up to shovel. They, they got to do it in four minutes. Okay, now the one day we did an offense defense, the defense crushed it, the offense struggled with it. Okay, because again, usually it's we found it's one of our quarterbacks, one of our running backs, and one of our linemen. Three guys screwed up for everybody. And it's funny to me to have running backs that don't like to run. Uh, does that make sense to anybody? Some of our running backs that don't like to run, I don't get it. So, but I'm uh, probably going to get some myself. So basically, you know, I want to do some things that hopefully you, know, you can take from this. You know, that's why I kind of went through those workouts real quick. I know a lot of that stuff everybody has done before, those types of things. But, you know, when I was at Penn State, Joe always used to say, if you take care of the little things, the big things would take care of themselves. And that's always stuck with me. Okay, and I, I think that's true with everything we do. So, um, when I showed you that week, when we went to two days a week, whole body workouts, uh, one day was the conditioning workout with the coaches, and the other day, uh, for lack of a better term, I just turned the guts train. Uh, there's a big sign in the Philadelphia Flyers locker room that says, we supply everything but guts. And I love that. I think that's a great quote. We supply everything but guts. Because when it comes down to it, you know, what do you have here when you're tired? <coughs> what do you have in here when you're tired? Okay? Do you have the heart and the desire the guts to do things right? Okay? When you're dead tired in the game, getting back to that mental aspect, are you going to be able to concentrate and push yourself and, and push your teammates? Look at each other in the huddle when the going gets tough. And by looking at each other in the huddle, you know you've got that same look that the guy across from you does. That's the kind of stuff that I want these guys to have now. Compete. I want us to compete year round. I don't want us to just start competing during spring ball or during preseason. So we do things to complete all year round. Okay? Um, so what we would do is we would do all these, I think we would pick four, four, right? And uh, so basically what we had is uh, we brought in offense as a unit, defense as a unit. And I would put, you know, skill guys and combo guys and big guys, and I think we had five teams. Okay, so it wasn't just lining together anymore. I want everybody around everybody. So what we did is we would usually take one or two of those black shirt kids and make sure they were in each group. Okay, so they could be tone set. And, you know, one group would start on the battery ropes. Another group would start with tire flips or the sledgehammer slams on the tire. Another group was doing a prowler. Another group would do the med ball throws. Now, what we did on the med ball throws, we would go across the field. I think our med balls were 20 or 30 pounds. And, you know, they would squat down, work on good extension through the hips, throw the ball as far as they can, sprint after it, pick it up. But the thing is, a lot of those guys, they sprint after it, they pick it up, and they just do this. I want our guys to get over there, pick it up, squat down. And again, so they're using those hips to throw the ball. So logo will be, uh, they'll be partnered up. So one guy takes it across the field, the other guy brings it back. And they're going to go for four minutes. Okay. So battling the ropes is a partner thing. One guy's on the ropes, the other guy's doing maybe a plank. Switch back and forth, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Tire flips is just basically across the field for, a minute, for four minutes. I want them doing that right too. I don't want to see guys like this. I want their butts down. I want them using their hips to flip that tire. If they do it right, the tire should just flip over. They shouldn't necessarily have to get up and push it. All right. Uh, and we'll just do that four minutes, and then we'll rotate, and then we'll rotate, and then we'll rotate. So they go through all those stations, four minutes on, uh, maybe two, three minutes in between, and we will rotate, let them get a drink real quick. And uh, again, we're getting a little work capacity and their ability to push through things. And at the end, we would just have some kind of competition. Uh, one time we had them do uh, over and back the field, 45 pound rubber plates, they had a whole pinch grip, and they couldn't drop it. And they had to go over and back like a relay. So it was just something to compete on. Again, get to the competition stuff. Uh, the other days we would do a uh, uh, tug of war. We would get the ropes out there, have a round robin type thing, just to get guys to compete. They actually got into it, which is really good. And uh, you no, know, a curl and the shoulder press, a reverse curl shoulder press would be another one we would do. Uh, so we might have one guy doing that. His part might be up on the uh, overhand shin, just hanging, okay, working in the grip. 
And so we like to, you know, we did this, uh, I think, around three or four times throughout the winter where we just, and again, that schedule that we have allows us to do that. Because we could say one day, if we're not happy with the effort that we get from the guys, we might throw whatever we're going to do on that Thursday, we might just say, the hell with it. I want the whole offense here at 7 o'clock, I want the defense here at 8 o'clock. And we'll, just go, we'll do some gut strength, okay? And again, the biggest thing for me is that mental toughness and their ability to compete. And again, getting back to the accountability thing I was talking about, push your teammates, okay? I want them pushing each other, I want them working together as hard as they can. Okay, so that's the gut training part of what we did. Um, okay, you know, we've all talked about neck training is a big thing, especially with concussions these days. Uh, we do neck, so if we're doing an upper body split lifting four times a week, our upper body days we're going to do neck flexion, neck extension. Our lower body days we're going to do lateral neck flexion, all right, right and left. And then we're going to throw in some of these other things. So I just wanted, um, so manual neck would be real quick thing right here. We have a guy like on a utility bench, they slide each other. You know, this would be a way we would do extension. I would just slide him here, he's just going to drive up, then I'm nice and easily, I'm going to pull toward myself and push down. All right, drive up and down. Now, when I first got there, we didn't have neck machines, so we did all manuals. So if you flip it over, I know some of you may have seen this before, but I just wanted to kind of go over it. And then I would just do flexion the same way. Nice move, moving up, and then I want them resisting on the way down. The stop right back here, let them get a good stretch. So we would do 12 and 12. The only thing that we look for, because obviously you only 20 guys, we can't take them through it, which would be ideal. But if I see guys doing this kind of stuff, they're just, real quick. They're just kind of doing this, looking around, I don't want that. I want them working each other, so by the time they're done, I want that guy that just did neck getting up, and you can tell that he worked his neck hard. Okay? So the only downside to manuals is there's no way to progress them, really. Okay? But it's a great exercise if you don't have the neck machine right there or something like that to use. Uh, floor neck. Again, something we can do real quick. I got this from Coach Gibson. It was really big on the neck training. He has a lot of great stuff out there. If you haven't seen it yet, just turn yourself over. All right, back. So we have to put the rubbles at 90. I want his hand on the floor the whole time. So it's basically taking the traps out of it. A lot of times when guys are doing manual stuff, they'll, they'll shrug up, kills their range of motion, all right? So, and all I'm going to do is spot him right here. He's going to go up, and then he's going to resist all the way down. Light touch, and then back up. I don't want his hands coming off the ground. You'll see guys start to do it, but they'll come up and their hands will come up. So now it's like they're doing like a partial crunch. I don't want them doing that. I want that hold on extension. And then we'll just have them flip around and we just call it hold on extension. I don't know why we call it that, but we do. We'll just again, yeah, do the same thing. Manual stuff, manual neck. All right? Now if we were going to do that, see, you know, we could obviously do real quick if we didn't have a machine at that time, you know, the lateral neck. We could do that manually as well. Okay, so. They're great exercises that you don't need any equipment for. You can do them real quick. You can do them together at the end of a practice. Uh, we found it before at the end of the lift. Uh, we can do a lot of the floor next stuff. We'll put it back on the uh, And then we'd have them do, uh, what? Hands back. On their own. So we can have the whole group do it and do it real quick. All right, floor neck, 30 reps of uh, flexion. So just up and down. 30 reps of that. Right into 30 reps of right ear uh, to right shoulder and vice versa. So 30 reps of that. And again, I don't want them going like this. I want a semi-controlled but moving. And then the, the third one would be rotation. So just doing 30 reps of that. Okay. And now at the end of a workout, that's pretty tough. It'll work their necks out pretty good and really work that strength really well. And then again, we're gonna do a lot of the shrugs, a lot of the upright rows. Uh, you know, the front shrug, so we have the palms facing in. That's a lot bigger range of motion for guys. So when they do shrugs, I don't want like their heads looking up at the ceilings. I think that, that kills their range of motion. I just usually tell them to keep it going, neutral eyes forward, and get up nice and high. And on that kind of stuff, I'm going to stick those reps. Okay, so again, I don't want guys doing this kind of thing. Because before you know it, the range of motion is this. I want them to stick it, and I want them to control it down without rounding the shoulders or leaning back. And again, engaging their cores, they do it. Okay? Right. So that's like the next stuff that we do. Uh, again, we train neck first, it's such a big thing for us now. Actually, uh, the sun will be changed up. We have a three rotation before we get into our bench or whatever we're doing, like our big movement for the day for the upper body. So we'll split our groups up, uh, again, 20. So there's 20 guys. You know, a third of those guys are going to go to uh, machine neck flexion, neck extension. A third of them are going to go and do their uh, barbell shrug, band upright row, kind of superset. And then the other third of them are going to do some kind of retraction exercises for shoulders, single joint stuff, a lot of stuff that we'll show you here in a second. So 
Again, the little things, you know, the neck training. The other thing is training the shoulder. Right? This is the most mobile joint, obviously, in the body. So the weaker this is, the more active those injuries you're going to have. So, you know, we do a scaption. So we're at the rotator cuff, you know, I think 45, 30 degrees, roughly. So we have a bunch of these therabands that we got from our PT. Again, these are small muscles. So again, I'm not, I'm not worried about loading these guys up and the guy's trying to use 50 pounds on this. I don't want that. So what we're going to do is stand nice and tall, core tight, just drive up, and I want to stick it and control it down. So, so some days we use the bands, and then other days we'll just grab those plates. And other days we'll just use the same, the same idea, just using the plates. Okay, now. If you remember on the, uh, those workout sheets, okay, we would do, I like to do this stuff, if we're not doing it at the beginning of the workout, we'll do it during our rest time during the bench. And I tell our guys, I want a good pace in the weight room, I don't like guys standing around. So if we have four sets of bench and we're resting for two minutes, both guys are going to do their first set of bench and then they might have scaps in ten reps right after that first set. Get their second set going, okay, and then we have band pool parts. Let's go over those real quick. So after set two, I might say I have my 12 band pool parts. Again, it's worth the retraction of those shoulders. Squeeze it real tight, okay? Uh, grab those and show them pizza pies. Uh, if we're not using the band for retraction that day, we'll do uh, pizza pies and call them. Actually, just squeeze it. Yeah. So up, squeeze their shoulder blades tight, back to the middle and down. We might do eight to 10 reps of that, okay? Um, or after set three, external internal rotation. We might just have them do this, you know, 12 reps of that, or we might use the band, internal external rotation. You can also do a uh, drop this We we'll also do, if you don't have something like that, if he's it, it against the wall right here, we'll do manual uh, resistance rotation. Okay, so again, if you don't have the equipment, just use the manual tool steps of things. Smaller muscle groups, you'll be able to burn them out really well with that. Uh, the wise stand or something like that. Wise T's W's, uh, we started off the winter just body weight, nothing. Uh, now we're using like five pound plates or seven and a half pound dumbbells. So no thumbs up. But again, I want them, a lot of our guys, anytime we do this stuff, they like to raise up and arch their back. I want everything kind of neutral, where they're really working on squeezing, so they might do eight reps of that, then they go to the T, thumbs up again, and that'll be hard for you to do. But they'll do a double, okay? Come back through, okay? Or some of those types of things. So I always want them working on retraction. Uh, let's go on arm haulers. Again, we're working all this stuff in between our sets. Okay, I don't want to waste time because if we're, again, if we're doing four sets of two or four sets, two minute rest, that's eight minutes of wasted time if we're not doing anything. Or I might say I want 12 arm haulers after set four. So they'll slide each other, then they'll go right to the ground and do these uh, arm haulers. Again, getting those shoulder blades nice and tight, working all those things. Um, stay right there. Uh, another thing we'll do is scat push ups. Again, I'm trying to roll through this, I don't want to waste uh, a lot of time. But we'll do scat push ups. Again, that would work in protraction of the shoulders, okay, as opposed to retraction. Uh, uh, or we use a dumbbell if you lay on your back. So if he has dumbbells in his hands, he's going to do the same thing. He's just going to push up towards the ceiling and back down. Okay, so we, we'll do that as well. Uh, it's not another, but we do a, just call them, you know, you got scapular elevation, depression, uh, those are straight arm dips. We'll do straight arm dips in between sets as well. Now, again, we don't do all these, but I'm just throwing these out. Again, so now we're working the pressure of the scapula. Okay, just trying to get those in. Uh, got through that. Mobility, sticks, and bands. The shoulders on the over red. Uh, I like this one. It's really good for shoulders, and it's also going to stretch that chest out. So if we're doing a lot of bench, again, I don't want them necessarily going way back, just enough to get a good stretch in the back. So we might do 10 to 12 reps of that. Okay? And just again, we're doing that in between our sets. So a lot of this stuff, you know, for injury prevention of the shoulders, uh, you know, instead of saying, I don't have time to do it at the end, I don't, well, do it between your sets, okay? Because you can hit it really hard, hit it real quick, and you don't need much resistance to do it, okay? Uh, the six, I just went to Lowe's and bought some of that, I don't even know if it's a quarter inch diameter or whatever it is. Um, for stick drills, working mobility, throw these in too, so, you know, we might get a snatch grip and do just a few over and back, you know, do a trunk rotations, uh, bent knee trunk rotations, all that stuff. And again, a lot of these things, I, you know, we preach to them that, you know, if we didn't do mobility sticks that day, do it after the workout on your own, okay? We don't need to tell you all the time to do things. I try to educate them as much as I can on things you need to do, and if we don't have time to do it that day, do it yourself after a workout. Uh, core training, okay? And obviously, you know, this is always a big part of plus work. Um, obviously, the core, the core muscles are stabilizers. So everything we're doing, like, we do a lot of stabilization stuff. I tell them if they want to do a thousand crunches, you can go do that on your own time. 
I want them focused on doing stabilizing stuff for us. So when I have the term strength workouts, we're really, in a sense, we're utilizing our core the whole workout. So when we're doing like lat raises or scatching, I want them engaged in their core. I tell them, pull the belly button towards your spine, stand tall. You know, not bending over, stand tall. If we're doing chin ups, pull ups, whatever, I want the eyes straight ahead. I don't want them back, and I want them squeezing, keeping their core tight. Negative only chins will bust their core up really well. Okay, negative only chins will get their core real well. The squats are engaging your core. Single leg exercises engage your core. On the bench, you get everything we do, I, I just, we all, we're always yelling it out to them engage your core, engage your core. So, you know, it, yeah, you know, there's a lot of nice stuff out there that they don't do abs. Well, you know, utilize your abs the whole workout. You know what I mean? So that's a big thing for us to go around. You know, plank side planks, good, great stabilization exercise for that. You get overloaded by putting like a plate on the small of their back, 25 pound plate, 45 pound plate, those types of things, or just do more time, uh, or just, you know, instead of doing one set of plank, do two. Uh, the power press, I've only seen that before. Um, so if we're doing chin up sets, we might throw this in there. That's what we're going to push right now. So, All right, so he's going to pull, pull. Right, so this one, All right, pull back to the chest uh, and push. So if this is attached to the, uh, the rack, sink your button up. All right, we'll just have him do like 15 reps of this. So as the band is trying to pull him toward me, he's got to stabilize and not let him do that. Okay, so that's the pallet press. Uh, standing band rotation was the one he was going to do. All right, and then just have him again in a good position and just twist. And stabilize that position. Uh, Supermans, you know, thumbs up. Uh, when we do these types of things, Supermans, they do that on our account because if we just tell them to do 12 Superman, Supermans, the, the reps will be horrendous. So we have them come up and they don't go down until we stay down. So squeeze up, down, okay? Uh, alternate Supermans, right arm, left leg, okay? Plate twists, uh, sky crunch, and your shoulder foot with that. We we'll use a 45 pound plate, but sky crunch is another good one. So they're just pushing up toward the ceiling. Again, you know, using the resistance. Uh, partner plate exchange. Yeah, we use a 45 on this, but you know, we'll let everybody in a row. You know, and just do these types of things come up and take it down. And they'll count it out for us. So if they're not counting out, yeah, again, they're not being How do you get that? You get that once? You got to make more? <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just. <laughs> but again, that's one of those things that when we're talking about folks on little things, I want them counting those reps out. And if it, if it sounds like there's two guys counting, we'll start back at one. So if we're doing 25 reps, I want them counting those out the whole time. All right? And again, with the knee, you know, the injury prevention, do a lot of things for the VMO, you know, which basically stabilizes the patella. And if there's a lot of you know, issues with that, we need a lot of the knee injuries. Okay? Uh, things I will do with that is like in between like our step up sets, where the guy's got to do a right leg and a left leg, the other guy will be back behind. You know, this will be attached to the rack. He's just going to flatten his heel down. Okay, so we might do 12, 15 reps of that. You could also have him sit on the ground with a towel underneath, right? Just work on, you know, just work on that little range of motion. Quarter squats, lunges, all those types of things. Real good, you know, to train that. Um, that's all right. The other things we do, lat hip slide. Over. That's all right. The band slide, again, a lot of those guys that get that valgus knee upon landing, we want to rectify that. So we want to do a lot of things for the abductors. So say after our last squat set, we might just have them green, you grab a green band, squat down, and we're just going to take steps. And what I tell them is I don't want their toe to start pointing in the direction they're going. I want to focus on driving the heel. Okay, so if they point the toe, then we're using the hip flexor. Okay? You ever put the band on the toe? What's that? You ever put the band on the toe to really force that down? No. I don't want to really necessarily do this. That's what I was saying. Yeah, you could never put the band on the toe. The band on the toe. Oh, on the front? Knee. Yeah. Would that be enough resistance for some of these guys? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. No, yeah, so, I mean, that's a good thought. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if uh, just the, you know, the band that you might have to use, I don't know if that'd be enough resistance. Um, so we'll do that uh, for the lat hip. Uh, we'll do a lot of things for the hip flexors, like I said. One area they're tight, everybody sits these days playing video games, sitting in class. I like to stretch those hip flexors out as much as we can. We'll use like the red band and just do like a lot of hip flexor work to strengthen that area. Because again, if this is weak, you know, chances are you're going to have issues with your glute strength as well. So. Mobility, again, between our squat sets, I want them doing like leg swings, 12 reps. Lateral, all right? Uh, rotations, just drive it up, rotate out, five in and out. Again, working stability, they need with the single leg training that we do. 
And again, a lot of the stuff, you know, I want, you know, I'm not looking for like four count negatives or anything, but I like nice controlled reps. Control them down, keep a good position. And then when we go to move the weight up in the concentric, I want them driving. I tell them those guys, you know, the Olympic movements, yeah, the weight's going to move fast. But on those other things, whether we're deadlifting or bench or squat or whatever it is, I want them, even though that weight's not moving fast, in their minds, I want them trying to move that weight as fast as possible. Okay, so I want them, I don't want to see our line going down and it's like they're afraid of the weight. Control it down and then drive as hard as you can to get that weight moving. Again, it's that metal aspect of the intent to move that weight as fast as possible. Doesn't mean it's going to move fast, okay, but I want the intent to always be there with those guys. So, uh, again, I try to get to as much as I can. Uh, appreciate your time. We know we'll be around most of the day. Uh, if you have any questions or if you have anything for me, you know, I'm always here to learn. Been doing this a long time. I don't know everything. I'm never going to know everything, so I'm always looking to learn new things as well. So I appreciate your time, everybody. Thank you very much. Anybody got any questions for the group? I want this place. I want this to be right. For the mid sets, you always do 30 reps. You change around. No, that was just like the one day. Yeah. When you 30 reps. So, I mean, like the, the, uh, the hit set on the dumbbell bench is not like they keep me six to eight for the most part. But if they get eight, I want to get them trying nine. That way, you know, if, if say the kid reps out 14, then hey, that weight was too low. Yeah. You know, like I don't want our guys, like I just keep telling them, and I don't want them being afraid of weight. Say you grab a weight and you only get three. I don't care. At least you challenge yourself a little bit. As opposed to being conservative, you know, and doing 12 reps on the six to eight set. I'd rather, you know, challenge yourself a little bit. So that's usually why I try six to eight. And not the leg press as well. Go so over the hamstring uh, triple threat. Oh, the triple threats? All right. Yeah, we now, we will actually utilize a ball for this, but uh, for this aspect, we'll try to do the best we can. So we have the, you know, the stability balls. OK, so just envision that my hand's a ball. Okay. So I want 90 degrees at the knee, 90 degrees at the ankle, toes up. He's just going to bridge up. Squeeze tight and back down. So that's the first one. So he might do 10 reps of that. The next one would be bridge up. All right, and I'm just going to pull. He's going to do that exercise. And then the last one is actually the ball. The foot is on the ball. The legs are all <coughs> straight. And he's just going to bridge up from there. Okay. So we usually start off. We go 10, 10, and 10. And then we might go 12, 12, and 12, 15, 15. I think I read somewhere that you know someone said if you're able to do three sets of 15 of that continuous, your hamstrings are about as injury proof as they can be. Now we never get the three sets of 15 to be quite honest with you, uh, but. Uh, we try to do as much of that as we can. Uh, the, Russian, the Russian drops or the hamstring drops, you have to slow that real quick. You know, spot here, keep everything in a straight line, he's just going to squeeze everything nice and tight. Catch himself and push up, and then squeeze tight. So we might do 10 to 12 reps of that. Again, that's a good one. Uh, hip bridge. We're just doing these, both legs together, single leg. Because the biggest thing is, is you know, the quadriceps are, that are an antagonist to the ACL. They're going to place stress on the ACL. So if these are really strong and these are weak, you know, you're going to cut, you know, your chances of knee injuries, you know, obviously we don't want to see knee injuries, but they happen, but try to do as much as we can to prevent them. So that's why the posterior training is so, uh, training so important, because the hamstrings and those posterior chain muscles are actually an agonist to the ACL and take stress off the ACL. So obviously the stronger they are, um, so we try to do as much as we can. You know, because if this is strong and this is weak, you know, just like I was saying here and here, you just put yourself in injury. 